This animation from NASA shows the minimum extent of summer ice in the Arctic over the last 35 years. It jumps about a bit, but there is a trend here. Less and less ice remains at the end of each summer. Look at the same data another way, and you see how the area of ice cover in the Arctic at this time of year has dropped from about 7 million square kilometres in 1980 to consistently fewer than 5 million square kilometres, and in 2012 to as low as 3.3 million. So you have year-to-year -year variability, but it's the long-term trends that we're concerned about. And certainly when you're going forward and you're looking at the next 20 to 30 years, there's nobody that really doesn't think that we'll see an Arctic Ocean that's ice-free in summers, because that's the direction that we're headed right now. Less summer ice in the Arctic will open up new shipping routes. For the first time this year, a cruise ship's taking holidaymakers through the Arctic, around the top of Canada. But it also has a dramatic effect on wildlife, such as polar bears, which live on the ice. Scientists also fear that the melting of ice will cause less reflection of the sun's energy, increasing warming further still. As you melt the sea ice, the ocean starts to absorb the sun's energy, warms up, and before the ocean can freeze again in the winter, it has to release all that energy back out to space. And so you see this really strong amplified warming in the autumn season. Arctic sea ice also plays an important role in driving ocean currents. These in turn affect the weather in both fisheries and agriculture worldwide, making understanding what's happening in the Arctic all the more important.